Hello. Let's see if I can figure out how to invite David Gonzalez in here. I don't really like this angle here. Let's see. How do I invite? Go live with no viewers. Hey, how's it going, folks? It's good to see you. By the way, I'm looking for, uh, see if I can figure out how to add David Gonzalez. I have no idea how to do this. So Sharp Limited. Let's see if I can add him. There he is. Let's see how that goes. Hey, Nick, Rich, Marty, Zach Zoom. Let's see if we can get David. There we go. Are you there? Yes, I am here. I am here. Hello. Ears on so we don't get feedback. Yeah, I have mine in too. Okay. There we go. Let me get my towel. It's a little hot in here. Hey, dude, it's hot as Just hell in here. I, I'm feeling. <laughs> okay, am I coming in? It's am I coming in loud and clear? Yeah. Am I coming? Oh, cool. Perfect. Perfect. First thing I want to do, I am going to send shockwaves and terror all over the Instagrams. Well, look at this basic beer. Basic? <laughs> out of the can like a savage. What just happened? There you go. Okay. There was something weird going oh, on. Oh, yeah. I was, well, oh, because I was wiping off my camera because... Uh, you know, I've been using it all day and stuff. Hey, Jack. Make I'm sure an old good. school savage. What up, Jack? How's it going, buddy? Hey, you know what? I'm going to go get me a beer, too. It only feels nice. I'll be right back. You should have been prepared. Okay, go ahead. Dude, I actually, dude, I just bought two Wagyu steaks, and I threw them on the smoker oh, right now, so nice. it's been a little chaotic. Nice. I've never had Wagyu before. A local butcher Ooh. shop is selling it, so I bought two awesome. fucking fat-ass steaks. One of them has a uh, a coffee and garlic rub. The other one has a Santa Maria style rub, and I just threw those bitches in there. So it's 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 gonna get serious in a little bit. All right, go get the beer. I'll okay. be right back. So Jay, Ken Kitch, uh, Ken Klitschko says uh, basic beer bros. Yeah, I mean I just whatever's available. You know, firing for effect as they say in the military. You know, I'm not I'm not up to about it. Uh, what's going on with all you beautiful people? This evening, we have a lot of good topics, and of course, we will uh, be soliciting your questions and comments and ball busting, so on and so forth. Uh, Glenn Helly, the sea monster's like, drink up, because he thinks I'm going to do something stupid. I've learned my lesson. I still may de do something stupid, but it's not because I'm drinking. Hey, Heather, Heather from Zingari, Zingari is there, and no, this is the first beer I've had, so I'm not, I'm not in the wind, uh, if anybody should think that. M3 must crave shaving. It's there. Craving shaving. Come on and do it. <laughs> All right. There, there uh, David comes with the, the beer. You got your ears on? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, go. what is that? Modelo? Yeah. Yes, sir. Cool. Hey, GG15. Samuel. Hey, so the first topic of conversation today, which you're sort of an enthusiast about, is this brush, this brush is probably about 70 years old, seven zero. This is an Everetti R40. And this was sent to me by a guy named David to try. And so my question is, I use this, by the way, I washed it really good. It didn't drop a single hair, not one. And I used this in a video today and it did not drop a single yeah, hair, okay. not one. And this knot is yeah. 70 years old. And so my question is, why are the modern knots dropping modern these knot? hairs left and right? Are you hearing me? Yeah, I can hear you. My earbuds are acting up a little bit funny. But why are the modern knots what? The last word cut off? I said, this brush right here is uh, 70 years old. It didn't drop a single hair. Like, it's it's very old. And every modern brush that I ever had dropped hairs left and right, uh, badger brushes. So what's up with that? I think everybody is used before. This was this was a new old stock that had never been used. It was still, you know, like that. I think one big thing is uh, back then products were cared about more. You know, uh, people didn't have the disposable income. I don't think back then that they do now. And if people wanted return business, they probably had to take care. Of, they they probably really had to turn out a quality product. If it was shitty, they're going to go somewhere else. And how everybody 
needs everything mass produced now to make things super cheap. Now we're just pumping out shit, and of course the quality is going to go down once you do that. And also, this is pure badger, and it was quite soft, and so it wasn't scratchy like pure badger is today. It was soft; it's a small knot, but it still performed very well, and it's seventy years old, and so it's it's been sitting around, never used for that amount of time. And I expect it to be dropping hairs or maybe the knot falling out. No, actually, it's probably the only badger brush that I've ever used that didn't drop hair. This, and I'm talking, I use three hundred. $50 Badger brushes, Theater, Shave Mac, Simpson, you name it, on down the line. Rooney, Morrison Fondren, on down the line. I used them all, and they always shed, some more than others. Um, this one, which is 70 freaking years old, nothing dropped. And it makes me think, now this was made in the USA. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. But this little knot um, technically performed better than, any, <laughs> you know, as far as not shedding, I don't know. Well, for, in, t in terms of it saying pure badger, I would imagine that back then yeah, that's more of a description as opposed to a classification. Uh, now we have pure badger, uh, two-band badger, silver tip, high mountain white, all that, all that goofy shit. That was probably just, hey, this is all 100% badger. So it was probably good hair, just it didn't have those soft, different yeah. classes with that. Surprisingly yeah. soft. If, if you buy a pure badger today, it's almost a little bit – and this thing is dry, and it's still soft, which is usually when badger dries out, they're stiff as a board. Um, I don't know. It's, I don't know what to make of it. I can't, for the life of me, use a pure badger brush, a modern pure badger brush. The, the stuff yeah, you see yeah. from Omega or you see from Parker, it, it just they, – they, they make my face so feel uncomfortable. It, it's like – What's the English word? I know what it is in Spanish, but I can't well, think of the English word. Anxious. It gets me anxious. So Jack, you know, I says, uh, Jack says loads of bollocks to upsell you. He's talking about a lot of the modern, very pricey, um, non-artisan brushes, you know, the, the uh, mass-made um, brushes. And so he may very well be right. But I tell you what, this one I'm surprised by because I did not expect to like it at all. And I was like, this is pretty doggone good. Like it was pleasant to use, which completely um, blew my mind. So JR just joined, and so I'm going to ask JR you. JR is, what's up? JR, this brush right here is 50 to 70 years old, and it was new old stock, and uh, it did not drop a single hair. It's pure badger, and I really enjoyed it. So my question was, why are modern brushes shedding all over the place, crap, and this thing that's 50 to 70 years old did not drop a single hair, through all my washing and using, and it actually is very soft for pure badger. It's an EverReady uh, R40. If you have any idea, let me know. Okay. Jack says mod modern badger knots are 50 to 80. I don't know. We've got a lot of artisans who have put in excellent knots, like David said earlier today, um, putting excellent knots in brushes. So honestly, um, I don't know why you would spend $400 maybe on one of the mass made ones when you can get a custom for a really good price. I don't know. Well, a lot of people still respect the brand name, so they'll still want it, the more important. But in terms of performance, they don't offer anything different than a that darn Rob, than a Lancaster V1, a Hair Force One, the Heritage Gel. They None of those expensive ones offer any different type of feel than what you can get from one of the artisans. There's a Pajit from I, <laughs> I am SM. Oh, huge. I've never seen his video. Pretty cool. Oh, it's a fucking huge markup, uh, markup, Jack. Absolutely, you're absolutely yeah. correct. The markup is fucking criminal. No way does fucking Morrison, Forringer, or Paladin need to charge that type of fucking money for their shit, unless they pick each hair so, individually, magically. I, I, I don't see what's the purpose. Hey, Lather. So I'm glad Latherhog joined because that was part of the sort of the next um, topic was he introduced um, the issue of dupes or inspired sense and i know a lot of people do a lot of whining and gnashing of teeth when an artisan releases a dupe but i like dupes and i'm going to tell you why there's a couple of reasons number one some people will never experience those high-end frags like the creed frags unless they get it in some either dupe from a fragrance place or in a shaving soap number two the scents are proven there's tens of thousands maybe hundreds of thousands of dollars of research and testing that goes into those scents it is proven there are good scents that people have. It's already been tested. People are going to enjoy them. They won't enjoy every scent. They're going to enjoy a lot of them. And so for me, 
it's like they're just giving people what they want and you know what it is if it says Aventus or some other you could get a sampler at Sephora and smell it and go oh I want that shave soap and so I'm honestly I think the uh I, I think a lot of the artisans who are perfuming uh gurus some of their stuff I like some of them come off badly they just they smell like a bunch of stuff have been thrown together and everybody rants and raves on them and then I'm like no and so I think a little bit of both is fine that's just my uh it's just my opinion. What do you think? Well, I really enjoy the dupe scents because you know what to expect from them. Yeah, there may be some little variations depending on where they source their oils for it. But I like that. I like knowing what I'm getting, especially if it's one of my favorites. Like the Creed Aventus, I agree, it's probably played out. Yeah. But I will still buy another one tomorrow if I really wanted it, if I, if I needed it. And I just got a fresh Spartacus a few months ago, so I don't need it right now. But I would definitely buy one. So just, one, I, I love it. One of the things you mentioned in your video is there is a, like, you like a good filet or, excuse me, a good ribeye and asparagus and mashed potatoes and green beans or something on a plate, but you don't want them put in a blender and mixed up together. And sometimes, uh, and this can go with big perfume houses too, but sometimes when there's so many notes in there, to my nose, it is a convoluted mess with things fighting. For, it, oh, it dude. It comes off with a complete mess. The thing that bothers me the most is when people use six different strains of the same note, like um, they have five different musks on it. Right. How many different tones of body odor do you need in a fucking soap? It's unnecessary. And then throw a little uh, patchouli on it too, for good measure. So it just it just compounds. Like patchouli, musk, those are great to round out scents. But when you have fucking five different of them, that that just just too heavy. So I think for me, a good recognizable scent. Uh, now, there needs to be a lot of different scents. Like everyone I think should have good recognizable scents and then they should have their own stuff that they make that people enjoy. Having a little bit of everything I think is great. And I don't balk at all at Inspired Scents because it's usually a good value. You get something you really love. You can get the aftershave and enjoy it and it's not $400. And some people will never experience them otherwise. And so. For me, and Lather Hog uh, brought up the subject on his video, if you don't want to buy the dupes, don't buy them. If you're fancy pants and you only want original scents, then only buy them. It's it's that simple. There's the stallion. Hello, stallion. Well, again, we have a we have a real first world problem here. We, we like to complain about shit that's not really the thing that we need to worry about. Um, we have a lot of options, man. It's it's a fantastic time to be a shaver yeah. because we could, we have access to excuse me, anything and everything we could want. So we have, there's a lot of dupe scents. There's a lot of unique scents. You could find single notes. You could find super complex. There's so much, dude. We should just be happy, man. It's a fucking thrill. Uh, Stallion says, hey, what's up, Anthony? Yeah, I say, what's up, Anthony? <laughs> yeah, it, it's one of those things where I just think there's there's something for everybody. And you can just buy what you want. You don't have to buy anything. And I really, like, for example, I bought Fallout and I didn't like it. I'm not mad at first line shaving because I didn't like the scent, first line shave. I didn't like it. You move on. I gave it to somebody who does like it. And then I bought something else that I did like. It's not the end of the world. Now, if I go to a company and I get like three or four misses in a row, then I'm like, okay, I might have to hold up a little bit. But I like the fact that people are doing different things and that people... Um, I don't hold it against an artisan to do a dupe, just like I don't hard, hold it against them when they make something that I don't like. There are some companies that I like almost nothing from scent-wise, and I just don't buy them, you know. Um, that's just the way it is. Some people really love that stuff, and, and I don't. Anyway, <laughs> let's go on to the next. No. Um, go oh, on. no, it just, I, I, I agree with you. It's just, we just need to be happy, dude. It's just. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot to be happy about. Really? This this year has totally reinvigorated me in terms of my love for wet shaving. Um, mm -hmm. Last year, you know that you know I kind of took time off away from the groups. I took time yeah. away from YouTube, and um, I was still shaving, wet shaving, man. But just uh, with all the drama and everything we were going through previously, and just yeah. you know, probably just general stress in life, man. I was I was pretty beat down, and even though I still wet shaved, that love wasn't there, man. Uh, but right. just something clicked this year, and it's just been so much fun. I'm seeing the great personalities, uh, people with great energy, much like uh, Mel and Nate Dog. The yep. things that those guys like that are doing, um, 
Corey, the, the chief, um, yeah, yeah. the energy yeah, yeah. that they bring to the community has made me just fall back it in love fun. with the, the, the community. I'm having a blast. Oh, uh, yeah. The homie Albert just popped in. What's up, Albert? The, the Stallion came back after a hiatus. Uh, I did. And one thing I want to say, and the Stallion and other people will mention it, when we started doing this content, there was no one to help us. There, were, there wasn't oh. really that much of a sin of content creator community where people on Instagram and you had to help each other. No big channels would mention small channels. And in fact, when I started doing daily videos years ago, no one did daily videos. No one had ever done daily videos. And I took a lot of crap for it. Like they complained nonstop. He makes too many videos. And I'm like, well, don't watch. It's, it's the same as soaps. They, people complain that Douglas makes too many soaps. Don't buy them. It's that simple. You don't have to watch the content either but we took a lot of crap <laughs> oh know, yeah a lot absolutely of drama and uh, quite frankly some people tried to run it off you know and they oh yeah absolutely we, their power. we had a real tough time and it was like every day it was going to war like we got onto the facebook groups knowing we we're going to get into somebody get into get into it with somebody for something oh and craving shaving so, i don't i'm not sure who you are but i assure you Come back to the groups, bro. Join the Rich Man Shaving Group. Join some of the groups because the drama level, we did it. We had a flare up yesterday, which has been very, uh, it's a very isolated issue that hasn't been going on for the past year or so. It's a, it's a much different community, man. It, it's it different. Is. Come back. Come back home. So Latherhog asked who the top dogs were from seven years ago. Um, it would have been Geo Fat Boy, Mantic 59, Paul H., uh, Michael Freeberg. Those were the only big channels that I'm aware of at the time. And the rest of us came in. Um, nobody ever mentioned us. No, I'm not throwing shade at any of those guys because they were doing their own content. At that time, channels didn't really talk about other channels. It was nothing. That, they talked about soaps and what they did, and they didn't really mention. It just wasn't a thing until yeah. some of us got together and we started supporting each other. And then people started Ray Pope and the Stallion started going back and forth, and, and it just became... The Leather like, Wars like was the mm -hmm. best shit ever on YouTube. Nick the Shaves. Leather Wars was fucking great. I forgot Nick Shaves. I can't forget Nick Shaves, yeah. Thanks for reminding me. Nick Shaves was... Uh, now, Nick, Nick was one that would mention people, actually, on occasion. I, I will say, Nick Shaves did mention some people, so I must give him credit. I do remember him mentioning some He was the only one at the time, but I think it was because he had a relationship with PAA, and he was coming on the round table. And so he was sort of familiar with, you know, interacting with other people. But most of the other people at the time didn't really interact. It wasn't a thing. So we're reading some of the comments. Yeah, we definitely miss uh, Busta. Busta is outstanding. How many folks got this, by the way? Man, this is incredible. <laughs> you know, P Sneaky Pete. Whew, I love the scent of this. This stuff right here. And I, so here's what's going to happen. And I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to say this before it even gets out. People are going to say that there was a coordinated effort and a marketing effort because a lot of people are going to love this. And they're going to go, what's going on with so many YouTubers? It's freaking good. We bought it and it's good. And it's going to show up on channels. And all this stuff shows up at the same time because it's a new release. It should be common sense, really. There's no collusion. It's just, I bought it. I like it. It's that simple. And it's fucking good, dude. Just like, Ooh. Everybody, everybody always wants to find some weird excuses as to why somebody's being successful and shit. It's just fucking good, dude. Like, can't yeah, we all like, just like it because it's a good fucking product? Well, it's like when Zingari's releases came out, the Healers and the other one. A lot of us, we wanted to use those as soon as we got them because they're good. Like, I love the scent, yeah. both of those soaps. The Healers and the Essentials, both uh, awesome scents, awesome soaps. So it's not, you know, it's I'm not just, you know, plugging Peter for Peter's sake. Um, it's just one, this one happens to be the one I have right now. And I'm like, wow, this is good stuff. You know, uh, scented soldiers. I, I didn't see him come in. So it's good to see you since it's do you like this, uh, Tim, you must've gotten it. Oh, <laughs> stallion says, yeah, this is the best. So stallion, have you made your video yet? I knew when I s smelled this today, I said, the Stallion's going to use this today. It's good. Hey, magic Mike, um, magic Mike. Hey, I, Magic Mike's another one of those guys. I know. I know. I shouted out a uh, uh, Nate and Mel. Magic Mike, he makes it to every single live that I do. 
and he shows up to all my premieres for my videos. He just has a great energy. That's just a good soul right there. Magic Mike, I, I, I love you, dude. I fucks with you. <laughs> what did you just say? I, I don't understand that. You're going to have to explain that to me. By the way, Steve Davidson is here. Everybody, I uh, hope you keep Thank you, Rob. thoughts and uh, prayers. His, his father just passed away. So, Stephen, you know, I talked to Stephen. I called him a little bit earlier today just to check in on him. And so, Steve, you know, I hope you're still doing well. And I hope you, hope you make some honing videos because I, I want to learn from you. <laughs> some new honing videos. Speaking of that, I must plug this guy because I like his honing videos. It is uh, Robert... Ortiz on YouTube. He makes terrific videos on honing. He's only got like 900 some subscribers. He's terrific. Like you got to watch if you're into honing, you got to watch the stallion. You've got to watch, of course, uh, Dr. Matt. You got to watch Stephen Davidson. This guy, Robert Ortiz is also one of those guys. Of course, you got to watch what's that guy's name? Keith Johnson. I don't know him personally, but I've watched some of his uh, uh, videos. By the way, he said, Inspector's in the house. Hello, Inspector, if you're on here. It's good to see you. What's that? I got the name Magic Mike during a Facebook Live. Okay, anyway, the next thing I want to talk about is going to be uncomfortable uh, for some. You've been talking about this a little bit on your channel. Now, I, I'm not, I, I want to make a caveat. I'm not saying this to take a shot at anybody because I realize prices on things go up over time. That's a natural thing that happens, but... When we started, you got eight ounces of soap for 20 bucks. And in fact, Douglas had uh, eight ounces of soap for 16.95. And it was routinely, you got six or eight ounces for under $20 usually, which was $2 and some odd cents an ounce. Now, if you get out those soaps today, you can still get a great shave with any one of those soaps. I still got them in there. There's no question that the soaps of today like this one or Zingari or whatever, you, whatever brand declaration, they're better. But are they $30 for four ounces better? Well, I was thinking about this. Cases, we've talked about no, the... that's, that's uh, grooming department prices there because most people aren't at that level. But I'm afraid they're going to get there. I'm being honest. Well, we've been, we've been talking about this, me and you, uh, off and on already for a while now. And... I really think that it's the consumer. It's our fault that it's happening. Um, we're always asking for people to get better. Whenever a sure. new formula comes out, we fucking sell it out in an hour. So yeah. why wouldn't why wouldn't artisans continue to add more shit into a soap? Because mm -hmm. so, we 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 eat it all up. We fucking love that shit. We want the new stuff. We're like the guy like the guys that like fucking Jordan sneakers. No, it doesn't matter how, what gotta, price tag they put on it. I got to give Heather from Zingari props because on the podcast the other day, I heard her mention that adding, you can add some ingredients in certain quantities that make virtually no difference in the soap. So I don't think I've ever heard an artisan say that. Like, and I'm not saying she's throwing shade on any other artisans, but I heard her mention that, you know, in, in some quantities, it means virtually nothing. You know, and I've also seen other articles and pieces where they're debating basically some of these ingredients, whether they're even all that beneficial, like if you read some of Mantic stuff. So the jury is sort of out on the, what I always call the super blue emu, the, the unicorn milk, the chupacabra oil, the unicorn milk, and all those other things, dragon tallow. Like it helps. I don't think there's any question because I, th you know where I really think it makes the most difference in the creaminess of the lather. Like that's where you can really tell. For me, I don't get that much on the post shave. Uh, that's just me, but many people do. So I'm not going to deny their experience. But sometimes I don't know how much of those ingredients are going in that soap. I don't know. Nobody knows. Go ahead, David. Did you have a response? Or you just I'm yes. I'm reading because the the, oh, the, okay. the comments are starting to fly by pretty quick. I'm like shit, shit, shit. So what's happening? I, I want to say there are companies like So Commander, Sterling, and others who have pretty much kept it very budget-friendly from the get-go, and that's their thing, and they still produce a quality product. Other people are making reformulations and reformulations, and I know some people who buy the same soap in the next formulation. Like if you have peaches and cognac from last year, you're like, oh, that's busted now. i got to get the Kaizen. Kaizen is great, but the old formula was, was, uh, was great as well, like – 
I don't know. Like, would I buy this in the next formula? No, I'm going to use this one. That's me. Because if you, I don't think this is an issue for somebody who buys an occasional soap. But for the folks who are driving it, the hobbyists who are buying many soaps, it gets really expensive really quick, in my opinion. Yeah. And for me, I don't care for new formulas. What I look for are certain ingredients that I know I enjoy. Okay. I like the I like the effect that goat's milk has had on formulas. I like the lather they produce. So if I see goat's milk, if I see cocoa butter, and if I see mango butter in the ingredients, I'm probably going to get that soap. I don't give a fuck if this, this is their first version or their 22nd version. If I see one of those three ingredients or a combination of them, fuck, even better if they have all of them. If I see those ingredients, I'm probably going to get that soap because I gonna... love the way – go for it. Continue, please. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh, I, lo I love the way that those particular ingredients, no matter what soap they've been in, I've had good experiences with those soaps. So I trust those ingredients when I see them on a label, especially if they're towards the front end of the label, because I know there's a little bit more of those in it. Now, what do you think? Now, I should also mention that the aftershaves have followed that same trend um, where they've gotten more and more expensive. They started out between 12 to $15, and now they're at 25 sometimes even more dollars. So the trend is generally the prices are up. The quality, I think, is definitely better. Has it? Has it risen to the level of the price? Personally, I'm not sure about that. And I say probably not. But on the same token, um, everybody's rent goes up. Everybody's got to make some money. And I completely um, understand it. So the next question is, do you think the vegan soaps have reached, like everybody always used to say, tallow or bust? So how do you feel feeling now about these vegan soaps that are um, out there that are rivaling tallow, I think? Well, Personally, there's only one vegan product that I think rivals talent, and that's Phoenix. Um, I haven't tried every new vegan Bean. base that's out now. But the old Phoenix, Guardian, Phoenix, uh, vegan base is very good, I, I would say. Never tried it. Never tried it. I, I trust you because, again, Heather's Sago base is the shit. I love it. It's one of my top three soaps. I don't know mm -hmm. which order I have everybody in, but her, uh, Heather's Sago base is in my top three soaps. So I believe you when you it's say that good. vegan is great, but I've mm -hmm. never tried it. So I don't know. But in terms of, um, again, like you mentioned Soap Commander. Can you get a good uh, shave from Soap Commander? Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. I still think to this day Soap Commander is one of the slickest soaps I've ever used, period. Uh, but in terms of the density oh, and the, the post shave, no, I have not. I have a sample of Highland Springs somewhere around here that I'm going to get to sometime in the next week or two. I do have a sample that uh, JR, actually JR, he sent me uh, this Ever Ready brush which is just fucking sexy with that clear bottom. Um, he sent me some samples of, uh, nice yeah. of Highland Springs. So I'll be trying it sometime really soon. So um, somebody said Dr. John's very good. It, it may be, but I'll be honest. I'll never buy soaps and tins because they get banged up. They rest. They're a pain in the rear generally. They arrive to you banged up. And I, I want my soaps when I put them on a video to look good in the way the artist intends. And those tins, or excuse me, the, the tins just don't hold up over time. You can look at them, they just look like crap. I mean, you would practically have to keep them in bubble wrap and I'm not willing to do that. So I just skip any tin uh, products. Yeah, wet, sh wet shaving products, I, I don't use for that very reason as well. Yeah, that's a good soap too. That is a good, he's got a lot of great scents, a lot of great soaps. I will only buy the creams because they're in the plastic cups. And as you know, I recycle the plastic. So if I finish a soap, I use it to put stuff in my, you know, whatever, well, uh, I, blade I, or whatever. I hope to be able to recycle my shit one day. I've never finished a soap in my life. Ever. It's hard to finish up. <laughs> yeah, I've, definitely... I've never finished one. Now, uh, oh, in junior, I have to, I did try Dr. John's back in the day. I, I tried Dr. John's I like back when it first yeah. came out. And, um, like yeah, oh, dude, I, like I love, uh, Propaganda. I still have the aftershave. I haven't seen soap for a long time. Oh, shit. I didn't know they were still doing business. That's great to yeah, see. I hope they're still. I mean, I haven't seen soap smooth for, for a long time, so it's good to see. Oh, yeah, I, I haven't had a soap smooth. Um, I believe soap smooth made that one that Peter Chuck Ellis has, that uh, Irish Moose type scent. It was really good. Uh, I can't remember the name. Emerald Moss, maybe, I want to say. Uh, Rich has... <coughs> Rich said he's never finished a uh, a soap uh, either. 
Yeah, I'm, I'm eight years in, bro, and I've never seen the bottom of a fucking tin of a plastic. I don't even think I've ever finished a goddamn sample, like one of those uh, Sterling samples. I never even got to finish one those of those. Those are things. the best. That's something I wanted to talk about. They have the best samples in the business. It's almost without, um, because they're wide, they fit down in something, and you can get a lot of use out of them. I would love to see artisans with more samples. I know it's a double-edged sword because some, some people are going to get soaps and they'll find they don't like a soap. But what do you want as the artisan? Do you want the customer to be happy and, and buy the products they want? Or do you want them to get one and then go, oh, this is crap? You know, it's, I think you can benefit because they're going to get samples. They're going to go, this is awesome. I'm buying it. You know, the Southern Witch. Oh, yeah. Southern Witchcraft is a good uh, vegan soap. The only thing with them is they have all these oddball sort of scents. And for me, I don't like those dark um, scents. No, I'm not asking Charky about <laughs> samples. Where are you going? <laughs> I'm going to go check on my on my steaks. I got them in the smoker right now. Does anybody know if there's a drop for Lancaster tomorrow? I never heard whether he's going to drop or not tomorrow. Well, they said it was a possible delay. I don't know if he put out another video because I know he has some uh, like a health issue or family issue, one of the above. Right. Uh, Glenn Helley said he's ripped through many a jar of Tobbs, which is pretty cool. We might have lost David Gonzalez. Maybe he has some janky internet there. I don't know. Oh, he's going outside. Okay, I see. You said you used a Serling sample for three months? Yeah. That's unbelievable. What you said? Can you hear me? Yeah. I can hear you now. I can hear you. I think. I think. You're kind of coming in. You're kind of coming in. I'm having a hard time keeping up with you. Okay. You still there? You still there? Okay. Let's see. There we go. Okay, can you hear me now? La yeah. Uh, Glenn Gilly says Lancaster postponed, which is sad. I hate to hear that. I would like to see another drop tomorrow. But, you know, he'll he'll get them out when he gets them out. It's no big deal. When you, I think when you stop moving, it'll probably uh, even out. Or you may have to drop out and come back in. I'm not sure. No, I took off my earbuds. It's the, it's the earbuds. I don't know what's the problem. They've been working great. And then all of a sudden, they just started acting funny for me. You're not acting. I don't know. Though, so it's good. Oh, perfect. Well, so okay. there you go. I'll just stay like this. So, excuse me. I, I had some other topics there. I guess we should probably throw it to the audience and see what they, they would like to talk about. I've gone through a lot of the things I wanted to touch on. Well, one thing I will touch on is, real quick, I know people have touched on it in their videos, but if you don't like someone's video, just don't watch it. Don't try to destroy them and run them off YouTube. I mean, that's crazy. Yeah, I can't agree anymore, man. Um, we need to try to be as supportive as possible. That bickering and stuff that we, we had, um, it really turns people off from the from the social media aspect of the, of the hobby. And personally, that's the social media aspect of the hobby has been the most fun and the most rewarding. So I yeah. hate to see people... Uh, not have a good time. It's, it's a real shame. Yeah. Um, Rod, I mostly only use synthetic steel. I, I own a, only one natural hair brush, and that's a bore. Um, I just, I don't like the expense of Badger. I don't really like the way they perform, and I don't like the markup on the knots, although artisans are doing a much better job of getting them uh, just for a reasonable price, I think. So Ken Klitschko said the complainers need to return to their moderated communities. <laughs> <laughs> Rod said uh, YouTubers and the forums are like that community. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a lot of people that do their part. And obviously, the people, if the people weren't producing products, there would be no we revolve around the products, too. So you certainly have to, you certainly have to give them pro What's going on in that? It sounds like he's, uh, I don't know what's going on there. I'm doing a live, and I'm also making dinner, baby. I, I, I could do a lot of things at once. I don't know about all that. Did you? Well, the thing, the, the thing, the thing that messed me up is I wasn't expecting Rocio to be gone. She had to go help somebody with, uh, I don't know, taxes or some shit. So that left everything to me now. So that kind of threw everything off. That wasn't quite expected. So Nick Clays asked, "Do did I order PAA's rabbit, banana, and peanut butter?" No, I'm not a. I'm not really a peanut butter scent 
person <laughs> myself, but you know that's that's just me. Uh, it's not. I don't think it's a scent that I want personally, but I'm I'm sure every a lot of people might, so enjoy it. So up for a shave, Dave is there. Hey, Dave, it's good to see you. Yeah, he's another guy that has a real good vibe to him, David Carter. Uh, mm -hmm. I, I like him. Art right, says uh, David is making him dizzy. <laughs> you are. Like, yeah, did I just hear like the X Files or something in the background? Yeah, um, my my son and daughter in law are, are watching X Files. It's, it's it's madness over here. Now that's really adding to it because you got X Files going at the same time where you're running all over the place. And plus, you got the hair out of control. Oh, dude, my hair! I haven't had a haircut in a while, dude. It's it's getting. Look at that. I look all disheveled. What would you say is your favorite razor right at this moment? DE or uh, straight razor? DE. Oh, DE? Um, dude, that carbon. You didn't use it much. I wish you would have used it more. I wish you would have kept it a I little like bit it. longer, dude. Razor. Oh, dude, but I, just a couple shit. I think you needed a few more, dude, because it's so much fun to use. It's just a, such a smooth razor. Um, I really enjoy it. I love that razor. You know, um, my absolute favorite will probably always be the, um, oh, I can't think of the, you know, the brass one. I can't think of the name of it. Charcoal. I mean, I know you don't like it. Oh, charcoal. It. But in terms of actually yeah. one to use that feels good, uh, the car, for me, just has that really weird, smooth, I just love that razor. Like, it's an all-around workhorse razor, I think, for me. Like, if I'm going to use a DE, I really want to use that one a lot. Oh, dude, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fan of the, uh, of the, the car razor. It, it's a very uniquely smooth. Something it's about it good, yeah. feels so sturdy, and in the hand, um, it's really enjoyable. You can't ask for much more from a razor, especially at that price. At point. the price, it's out. The brass is outstanding at the price, and the plates aren't very expensive. It makes it a really like to me. Twenty one dollars. Twenty one dollars. That everybody talks about the Rockwell 6S. I would almost, if it were me, I would buy a car with a couple of plates instead because I think it's a better razor. That's just me. Uh, I think the quality of product you're getting is better. The Rockwell fits my preference in a shave of what I like a little bit more. I, I, I like the blade feel. Again, I, I'm going to buy, a, I might next week I actually might do it. I might buy a, a Fucking ass. <laughs> I might buy a, yeah. I might buy a, either a E plate or a D open comb because I personally prefer a little bit more blade feel. So, so I'm thinking of either going E or D open comb. So craving shaving just said he's been having trouble with his car struggling. Um, it's very I think I know why. why. No, the reason the reason why he probably has issues with it. Because if you use the same angle as you use probably all your other uh, DE erasers, um, probably let's say about here, it doesn't cut. It doesn't cut well, or you don't feel the blade at all. I feel that you have to rock it a little bit more it, here. Right. You got to ride the cap a little bit more in order to be able to really get the most out of it. Yeah, I, I think it's one of the smoother. Even the threading on it, when you thread it, I don't know if you've noticed, but it is silky smooth. And that threading, and whenever I have a razor with really silky smooth um, threading, I always know it's going to be. I know they've taken care. That tells me a lot. When you get one that's grainy, you can tell this yeah. is just you know sort of eh, so so. You know that's the way I feel about. It. So next, straight razor, favorite size, safe favorite style, favorite color. Okay, so for me, uh, my straight razor preferences is usually about a seven eight. Seven eighths or six eighths. Seven eighths is preferred. Um, if it gets any smaller than six eighths, I feel that the lack of weight of the razor makes it less efficient. It makes you work a little bit harder. You have than to you horse it. Yeah, and then anything above a eight eighths, um, I feel you start losing functionality because it's just so large and cumbersome. Um, that it just is not as convenient for me. So I like that six eight seven eighth realm. I have also been enjoying the six eights, and uh, now obviously I don't own any of the big giant blades that you see, like Kai or 
one of these uh, spreckers. Um, so I haven't used the blade that big, but I find the six eighths, seven eighths, that tends to feel pretty good to me. A little extra weight, sort of like the, um, the five eighths hollow ground. Sometimes, especially in through the corn, right here for some reason is extremely tough, and I have to horse it a little bit, especially on the upstroke. The closer you get to that goatee and mustache hair, the 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 thicker that hair growth is going to be. So those light razors really struggle with that, like yeah. a, a good deal. So uh, Magic Mike says nineteen sixty. <laughs> fun. What grind y'all like? Um, honestly, I haven't used enough to know because I've only used you know full hollow, half hollow, and one wedge. So I don't really know. But uh, they would probably advise. I, I have. I prefer the full hollow. Once you get to that uh, extra hollow and all that other stuff, I don't really notice much of a difference. Uh, full hollow along those, I like the singing of the blade. I like to, I love that feedback. The feedback for me from a, a very hollow grind is just satisfying. It is. So, um, <laughs> yeah, it, it's satisfying. So even though the wedge blades, I'll tell you, wedge blades also give you a certain satisfaction because they cut through the hair smooth and just a, it's a very different sensation when you use one of those razors. Uh, Justin, the Red Island Shaver joined us. Hello. So, Paji or IMSMS said a 36 uh, or bust. Have you ever seen uh, that video he has called the Paji lathering method? No. He makes a he makes a crap ton of leather lather. Like you got to see it. It is it is remarkable. He used sort of a modified Marcos method uh, lather, and I know everybody knows Jeff and Chris from another cut above. And Tim, actually, have you ever seen Tim Shaves lather? He has a really Nice looking. It's not thick, but it's a super sheen on it. Uh, yeah. Pajit has a Pajit has got lather all over. It's all over his glasses. It's all over, everywhere. Like it's it's pretty remarkable. It's fun. Actually. <laughs> hey Justin, it's good to see you. I really enjoy using a uh, modified Marcos method when I uh, when I lather. Even to this day, I don't uh, wring out a lot of the water in my brush, and I like what to the let the water in the brush oh. really bring in the soap. So uh, IMS, IMS MS says he's just helping out Arzen by um, causing people to use more soap. But his method, if you try it, it, it does produce a lot of lather. Like, I, you know, I can't break my habits. I just do it a certain way. But other people really uh, – <laughs> uh, Ken Klitschko said, dude is making dinner. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, Anthony Vincent, uh, thank you for doing that straight razor shave. Trust me, it will get less scary as time goes. So it, it gets better. Trust me. Hey, Chris England, good to see you. And then Alejandro, good to see you as well. I'm about to what throw you... some uh, Brussels sprouts in the oven. Brussels sprouts. I don't know about that. I'm not into the Brussels sprouts. Oh, dude. Brussels sprouts with some garlic and ro and roast them in the oven. They get a nice nutty and sweetness to them, dude. They're fantastic. You just got to know how to cook them right. Did he just say he was going to get that nut? I don't know. It sounds like a don't conversation. <laughs> he didn't hear what I said, did he? <laughs> Sprite sprouts are good roasted. Ken Klitschko says if you so watch Anthony the first Vincent says, yeah. <laughs> hey, David, I hope everything is well with uh, Laura. I'll talk to you tomorrow about that. So thoughts and prayers for Laura, uh, David. Yeah, Anthony, just don't try to do the whole shave at one time. Like a lot of us on video are doing all three passes and all that stuff at one time. Just do your cheeks, call it a day. And when the blade doesn't feel so scary, you can do a little more and a little more and a little more. That's probably a better way to learn and doing your whole face at one time. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I agree with you. I've always recommended, even though some people are like, oh, I did my whole thing and it was easy. You know, everybody's going to be different, but rule of thumb, if you're new, just go work the cheeks and go from there. Well, not everybody can be like the dude of shade where he just, he does the craziest things that I've ever seen on video and doesn't get cut. And I'm like, I don't know how that happens. I really don't. Now, he's calmed down now. But when he was first doing those videos, it was scary. It's like we were all talking like he's going to the emergency room. 
<laughs> he's going to the emergency room. Yeah. And we're not trying to remember. get his back because he's here and he'll answer. And he'll say, no, bro, I just, I have a feel when I'm ready to get cut. You know, I can feel it and I back off, which is an excellent thing to do if you can't feel it. It's a man who kept that in. Hey, yo, Chris, yeah. also, um, I don't have the controls for this. You probably do. There's a section where people can submit questions. I don't know if you've ever pushed. I don't know if there's a no. button that shows them. There. So there might be questions in there. And then also. <laughs> uh, so so uh, the dude of shaving. So he wants me to ask you, what oh, is shit. it like and what does it mean to be a real mother flipper? <laughs> um, so for the, those of you guys that don't know it's a little bit of an inside joke if you haven't seen my last YouTube video I kind of went a little fucking crazy um, <laughs> I don't apologize for acting a little getting a little rowdy in my videos but I probably did curse a little bit more than I probably should have um, and I said motherfucker a lot and um, pretty much, I just have aspirations of being a real motherfucker. So, there, there, so you have to there explain what that is. That's what uh, that's what Junior is getting at. What is it? What is it to be a real mother flipper? Hey, dude, just just be yourself. Be real, all times of day. Don't fucking change who you are because you're around your friends. Because you're around the neighbor. Just just be you. If you're authentic, one hundred percent of the time, that's what it is. Well, you realize that sometimes when you're around the neighbor or maybe your kids at school, you can't be drop, dropping the F-bomb and you know what I mean? So sometimes you have to moderate a little bit. Oh, just cursing is not part of your personality. I oh, could be a real motherfucker. I, I could be a real motherfucker without cussing all the time. Okay, I got you. That makes more sense. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the see, cussing doesn't here, so Go ahead. Keep, keep uh, going. I see. I fucking... No, go ahead and check them out. So the next one is, did you see it? Yes, I see. What's the worst cut with a straight... And where for so, so sharp, David? I've been lucky that I don't. I've never really cut myself serious. Um, typically, when I cut myself, I don't take my glasses off. So where I get cut all the time, it seems, is right here in the ear area. My hands will bump my glasses, and boom, and I'll, and I'll clip my ear. Um, I've never had a bad cut from a straight razor. The worst cut I've ever had, period, though, was from the fucking fusion uh, razor. I cut right here. Really? On the wow. with, the, with a fusion razor. I took a fucking chunk off of my. It got me like a potato peeler, dude. And I was bleeding for probably damn near a half hour. It took By a way, fucking chunk. Ask those questions if you want. Where I have cut myself more times than not, and you'll see there's still a little line right here. You can see I'm already grown back, but there's a line right there. You can see it. And it's visible. It's putting, it's putting the razor to my face. And so I'm far more careful now when putting the razor to my face. You press just a little bit and you just feel that little, oh, I know what that is. And I've done it on this side too. I've done that four or five times uh, over the years, either with a shave hey, head or whatever. I've pretty much seen all the cuts you've done on video and at least they're never bad. You've cut yourself a few times, <laughs> but, they're, but they're never, I wouldn't classify them as a bad cut. Peter Charcalis' first fucking shave video ever was, great. was probably the bloodiest video I've ever seen. That was the one that best, and I need to get him to repost it as inspiration because he would he had that uh, Samsung uh, um, shave at like Camisori style, I believe, and he would cut himself and he would go, "Oh, I cut myself," and then he would cut himself again and he'd go, "Oh, I cut myself," and then he was saying, "Oh, this razor is going on the B B uh, BST as soon as my." Uh, video is over he cut himself i don't know how many times in that video and then you know he worked at it and well he, he got to the point where he didn't cut himself and so perseverance yeah. you know and his, andre, his, uh, from lancaster how's your wife andre let us know I, I hope she's well i hope she's well I hope, I hope you being on here is a good sign i really do so imsms says uh he typically doesn't shave with Glasses on I have, I have to have my glasses on. My eyesight is so bad. I, it's bad, dude. I have to have my glasses on. I'm so uncomfortable not having my glasses on. From the moment I wake up, I have my glasses on all day. My, my eyesight's really bad. Right. Let's see. Yeah. Yeah. Go check out IMSMS on uh, YouTube. He does some uh, fun videos, especially those lather methods. That's pretty good. 
yeah, they uh, the the cuts there. I, I probably still got a couple of spots on the dome there from those from the leaf uh, when I got a little loose. Uh, so for the people who complain about, uh, she's doing much better. Andre's wife, great. Um, but for the people who complain about Junior being foolish, I've been foolish plenty of times on video. You know, sometimes you're foolish. It's just that simple. Thanks, uh, Rod, for stopping by. We appreciate that. So I, I wear glasses, but I can see well up close, but not far away. So I usually take them off because they get in the way, actually. I can't. Sometimes they actually hinder my uh, close-up vision. Yeah, people ask me if I can't see far or close. Well, I can't see shit, period. I'm fucking just blind. <laughs> I don't know the difference. Said, I can't see shit. He said he can't see anything, anytime, anywhere. <laughs> yeah, it doesn't matter. Good light, sunlight, red light, black light, it doesn't matter. I can't see shit. Right. That, well, you know, you got to have glasses. You got to see. I need them for far off vision. So, you know, I don't, up close, I'm fine. I don't need them more for reading my phone or reading. You know, it's all good. But there's Lyle, the Sask Shaver. I didn't even see you, Lyle. Hello. Good to see you. Uh, Lyle and, and Justin are both good dudes. When he goes outside, he freezes up, doesn't he? Or is it just me? I don't know. Y'all still here? Comment if you are. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he locks up. He must. He must get like. He must get to the extent of his Wi-Fi when he goes outside. So Sleepy A says he's has trouble seeing too. I'm going to bed. Yeah. Thanks, uh, Stallion. Did you make a video today um, with the the. Uh, Cognac. David is buffering. No, you're you're back. Okay, I, I was here for. I've been here for a while, and I just seen you frozen for like the longest time. Like fuck. <laughs> yeah, you were frozen too. Okay. Cool with glasses on. Shaver is shave cave. Yeah, he wears the sunglasses. Let's see if anybody else have any, has any questions. Get us up. Uh, just looking. There's nothing else right this moment. Oh, okay. So the stallion posted his video. I'm going to watch it after this. Then I'm going to go to bed because I'm going fishing in the morning. And I might do a straight razor shave on the river tomorrow. You know? well, what, kind of, what kind of fish do you catch in your area? Trout, bass, whatever will bite. I'm an equal That's opportunity cool. fisherman. I'll catch well, well I've, ne I've, ne I've never gone fishing in my life, dude. I've always Good wanted fun. to, but I don't know how to, and I don't know anybody that will take me. It's like <laughs> gotta have someone like – because I'm real city. My family, we grew up just very, very city. My dad, all he knew how to do was fucking do about sports. He did his regular nine to five. In terms of any other fucking well-rounded off skills, uh, I wasn't really showing much. I don't have a boat, uh, unfortunately. I, we had one growing up, but I don't have a boat, sadly. So it's got to be from the bank. But I will do more than the scented soldier. When he got behind a wall on the river, I'll actually get by on the bank of the river, you know, like without any wall or protection. Maybe I'll get in the river even just for added effect, you know. I'm down, Junior. If you, if you know how to fish, bro, I'll go with you, homie. Yeah, because I've always wanted to fish. I've never, I've never, I don't know how to. Don't let I'm going to fucking. Well, who, who me or, or Junior? Junior. That He'll probably be drown us both. A trip if he went, uh... It'll be like Gilligan's <laughs> Island. <laughs> yeah. By the way, uh, has anybody seen the dude of shavings uh, cognac <laughs> video? It's pretty funny. Yeah, Justin says he misses uh, fishing. I, I know it. You know, I completely understand that. Um, man, this is good. Whew. I love this. I took a sample out of this, so maybe I'll use it tomorrow if I get a chance. Depends on the weather, or if I'm really catching a lot of fish, I may wait. But just depends. Oh, also, Chris, when this ends, it's going to give you an option if you want to save it to your uh, your. Uh... IGTV. So um, I've already had like about three different people request that you do that because they were going to miss today's live. Okay. So um, yeah, let's make yeah. sure we save this so people could come back to it. Well, I appreciate it because I didn't really know how this would go. I've, I've never done a live. I've never hosted one. So I didn't have any clue how to do it. It's not really that difficult. It's not splitting atoms. Yeah, right. I know you get frustrated. I know you get frustrated with IG, but it's, it's pretty user friendly if you just uh, if you uh, stop being that get off my lawn guy. So Shave326 says uh, Junior's video was perfect. Do you have this, uh, Shave326? By the way, if you have this, um, let us know. I'm interested to know who, who has it. Anthony said, uh, 
both he and his like the wife were laughing at and you should because it is funny i think i uh, do i watched I, it i think a total of 10 times i've been smelling this all day <laughs> i really like it uh, it's one of my that, favorite that, scents that i've gotten for a while dude that peach scent is great and rocio is not much of a girly scent type of person so fruit i was concerned she may hate it but dude she loves it she absolutely loved it. And I was like, cool. That's a fucking, that's a cosign right there that I could get the splash. Because she fucking loved the scent immediately. So Ken says his is still over the Pacific somewhere, I guess. Uh, so if Pete put you in the back of the bus as well, I guess. Because he put me where, where in the line. Where's Shave326 at? Uh, look at Oh, another Hawaiian shaver. Does he, uh, any relationship with Kai? Like, not obviously your, your brother or nothing, but have you reached out to Kai by chance? Uh, yeah, I think they talk. I think I've heard him mention one another. I don't know if they're close on or on the same island or anything like that, though. Thanks for coming by, Raza. Yeah, some people say they have the peach. Peach cognac or peach banana secret. Oof. <sighs> Slightly, I would say this one um, because it's a different sort of peach. But would I get rid of either one of them? No, I like both, and I'm going to use them both. And, you know, it's outstanding. I would think that that peach and banana – is almost kind of like a novelty fun type of deal as to pose where peach good. and cognac is an actual scent that you'd wear out, like you'd actually wear as a fragrance. Am I right? That's just what I imagine because I haven't smelled the, the peach and banana or the, yeah, uh, peach and banana. Yeah, but I like both, you know. Um, uh, Shave 326 says Ken lives about 10, or Kai lives about 10 minutes. Oh, shit, that's really close. Damn. Yeah, so maybe you can go over there and see the rooster and all that. It's always growing on his video. <laughs> Richard, as he calls him. That's pretty good. What does that uh, soap that Peter made for him smells like? The, the, the cock soap group? Soap. The, wrist, the rooster soap. Is Call it by its true name, Chris. Have some respect. <laughs> the rooster. That's another name for the other word. Would you, have you, has anybody ever smelled it? I don't know what it smells like. But I, I don't, like I don't have that soap. I've never smelled it. I heard it smells good, but I have no idea. Yeah, what like group that. is it from? I don't even I know no what group idea. it is. I have no idea. We need to talk to Sneaky Pete, I guess. I, I, I don't know how I, would, how I would explain to my wife that I'm in a cock group. <laughs> that would be difficult to explain, I would imagine. It's not easy. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know how that conversation would go. Like, hey, babe, she, look at the soap opinions. I got from my cock group. You know, she's got a strong opinion, so you might not go She has a strong way. opinion on everything. Absolutely fucking everything. That's true. I thought she was going to do some videos. Why no videos? She's just been a little bit busy. It's just been a little chaotic time for her. Uh, her job is kind of, uh, it's kind of weird because they cut her hours at work, but she still has work she has to get done. So she ends up bringing a lot of that shit home, and then she's in a fucking bad mood, and then there you go. So, <laughs> Nick Clay says he's not good with smelling scents, but the rooster soap smells amazing. I'm well, glad you said, like how that cock smells, dude. I'm I'm, I'm thrilled. <laughs> I'm not, he said it. <laughs> that is pretty Nick funny. loves the cock. Got it. That, that's a kind of strange name for a group. It really is. So, we have two minutes left. So, what do you want to get across to folks in the two minutes that we have left? Hey guys, if you're not familiar with me, man, I, I hope you guys would give the YouTube channel a chance. Uh, so Sharp David is my YouTube channel. I know some people probably already, most people probably already do know me, uh, but I know Chris has a following that's far bigger than mine. Since he's hosting it, it might reach out to people. Um, drop drop by the page, fo follow the So, so uh, Sharp Limited page. <laughs> Peter's cock is great. God damn, that's <laughs> gay. You know, that was bad. That's pretty good, I must say. Uh yeah, and also he's a real mother flipper, as you all, you all have discovered uh, earlier. Yeah, it's good to see you too. Um, is that you, Oyve? Because you got so many different names, I never know which one it is. So let me know if that's you, Oyve. Nick Clay is killing it tonight. He must have had a little adult beverage, maybe. Yeah, thank you, Justin. <laughs> thanks, Justin, for uh, coming along, and I always appreciate. It. By the way. Justin's last video where he talks about how, why he wet shaves, that's one of the better ones to see. He talks about what happened. He had a heart attack. I'm not going to air it all out, but go watch the video because it's a real red, red Island shaver, the red Island shaver. I don't know if Thanks I'm even following red Island shaver. I got to check him out. The I, don't, I, don't, I don't think I have him. Super nice guy. Well, well worthy of uh, being followed. 
So, um, yeah, it's Chepo. It's Oive. Like, he's got so many names. Like, one Oive, and then his real name, and this one's like AB Brooklyn <laughs> Medic, AK Brooklyn Medic. Yeah, Lyle agrees. Oh, yeah. He likes really to keep good. people off balance. <laughs> he did. I really liked uh, Justin's video, though. And also, watch watch the Dude of Shavings video. The It's very short and to the point. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Until next time, sure, Shavy.